Good morning, or depending on you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name is Ross, not always told, out of voice radio. So today, we are taking a good look at why Puzzle of Time has been banned in the expanded format. We have already seen an overall video looking at these four new bands, and I have shown you a video where Getsis was looked into in detail as to why it was banned. And we've done the same thing for Hex Maniac, but ladies and gentlemen, it's time to look at Puzzle of Time, because I must be honest with you, this was a surprising one for me. This was a card where I looked at it and I thought, you know what? I don't think it's much of a problem. When I look at Getsis and I see that you can have a super easy turn one win by just dropping it before your opponents even had a turn and getting rid of all their good cards, yeah, Getsis sucks. Puzzle of Time, not so much, but there is reasons for the ban. So let's have a look. Now, the expanded format is black and white on at the moment, and it has been confirmed that it will remain black and white on in September, so there's no sets rotating out, you're just not going to be able to use Puzzle of Time. So what does it do? Well, it allows you to either play one of them, and then you rearrange the top three cards of your deck, nobody cares, or you play two of them at the same time, and you get to take any two cards from your discard pile and put them into your hand. This is really good. Essentially, this allows you to just recover your resources over and over again. So cards like Enhanced Hammer and Delinquent, they can be used over and over again using Puzzle of Time. Now, to be fair, Delinquent is a supporter, so you can use Versus Seeker here. But Puzzle of Time, you can get a Delinquent and an Enhanced Hammer. Something like an Enhanced Hammer, if your opponent is really reliant on special energy, you can essentially just keep dropping enhanced hammers so your opponent can never have any energy on the field. If you're using something like a Zerosic in the expanded format, then you've got to keep using Versus Seeker, you can't use it as your supporter for the turn, you might run out of steam, etc. But if you play, say, free enhanced hammer, you can get essentially four of these back using Puzzle of Time, turn three Enhanced Hammer into seven and just wreck your opponent's board. But let's face it, the biggest issue with this card is Zoroark. Zoroark's got the trade ability. You discard one card from your hand and you draw two from your deck. But of course, you've also got Execute in Expanded, which allows you to pick it up from the discard pile. So as long as you've got an Execute in the discard pile and you're not ability locked, then trade essentially says draw two cards. So if you've got one puzzle of time in hand, instead of playing something like a Cynthia and hoping to draw into two at once, or having to play a Professor Sycamore and discarding one of them, you can just draw cards. And if you've got four Zoroark out, you can draw eight cards, and there's a decent chance you're going to draw a second puzzle of time. And it just makes that deck way, way better than other decks, because it's not just that you've got the added consistency with trade, it's that you can parlay that into reusing any of your resources. Now, we have other recovery cards, but they're all fairly limited in terms of they do one thing. So I've already mentioned Versus Seeker, which can be used with Delinquent. That allows you to recover supporter cards, but only supporter cards. So you can use it to grab as a Rosic and use that as your only supporter for the turn, but you can't use it to get something like an Enhanced Hammer back as a really powerful item. You can use Special Charge to get back your double colorless energy, but it only gets back your double colorless. So now you're playing probably only one copy because that's all you can find space for and then you're trying to draw into it at the right time and it becomes a little bit awkward. We've got Super Rod which works for both Pokemon and Basic Energy and that really is about the most wide ranging recovery we've got other than Puzzle of Time. And here's the thing, we don't have a way to recover item cards. Because generally speaking, some of these item cards, if we can recover them too much, it gets pretty bad pretty quickly. You only have to go back to the days where Lysander's trump card wasn't banned, and you could play it with Seismitoad, and I'm talking about UK Nationals 2015. I know a lot of you listening and watching are in the US. It was banned for your national championships. It wasn't banned over here which meant we had a national championship where if you didn't play Seismitoad with Lysander's trump card, 
you couldn't win nationals. I mean, in a very real way, it was the only two decks in the final, and it was all over top cut, and essentially it just spent all weekend beating anything that wasn't that deck. It was a little bit silly. Because you've got really good item cards that if you recover too much, make decks broken. And a lot of them are on coin flips, but if you can use them all the time, it's not a huge problem. So take something like Super Scoop Up. You flip a heads and you can put a Pokemon and all cards attached to it into your hand. So like a Damage Seismitoad, for instance, you can pick it up with the double colorless and then put it back down with the double colorless. Well, it's on a coin flip, so if you flip tails, this doesn't work, but then again, it's fine, because you can just use multiple of them using Puzzle of Time. Enhanced Hammer we've already mentioned, but you've got Crushing Hammer. Crushing Hammer's better, because it gets rid of any energy on your opponent's side of the field, but again, you've got to hit a heads, which is much more difficult to do if you've got half as many Crushing Hammer. Puzzle of Time turns it from four Crushing Hammer, you expect to hit two, to eight Crushing Hammer, you expect to hit four, and really changes the look of that particular game. And then you've got everybody's least favorite item, or at least my least favorite item, Hypnotoxic Laser. That redonkulous item that I'm not a fan of, Probably for the best I wasn't doing card analysis videos when that was released. I don't think I'd have had much nice to say about it, though it was broken. Automatic poison, flip a coin, if heads, your opponent is asleep. And to be fair, if you can keep using this, you keep having a chance to put them to sleep. But even if not, you can poison them. And this turns four turns of poison, if they don't get out the active, into eight turns of poison, if they don't get in the active. And more, unfortunately, if they do struggle to get out of the active. It's dumb. And here's the thing about Puzzle of Time. It's not necessarily about what we can do now. It's about what might come around in the future. So Hypnotostic Laser is a perfect example of a card we didn't see coming. It was an unusual card, one that we didn't expect, one that we weren't really looking out for, and it changed the makeup of the game. And then when combined with stuff like Lysander's Trump card or Puzzle of Time, it got infinitely better. We don't know what's going to be released in the future, but whatever item card it is, Puzzle of Time would make it better. I mean, we've already got stuff like Hypnotosic Laser and the Hammers now, but it could get worse. And the thing is, it's not for every deck. Every deck can use Puzzle of Time, but the only decks that can really take advantage are decks that draw a lot of cards, like Zoroark decks. Although any other good draw engine we get in the future would also make this more and more busted. Now, I've already mentioned Lysander's trump card, and this was basically the reason it was banned. It wasn't because you could recover supporters, we had Versus Seeker. And it wasn't because you could recover Pokemon, because we had Super Rod. It was because you could recover items. A lot of these items are made under the assumption that no matter how good they are, you're limited to four per deck. And yeah, you've got those exceptions like Gardevoir that can bring them back, but that's using an attack for your turn, and using your GX attack for the game, and leaving that Pokemon that gives up two prizes in the active very vulnerable. So it's really measured in that you get to reuse the items, but at a huge risk to yourself. Puzzle of Time doesn't carry that same huge risk. So is Zoroark a problem? Not really. Zoroark is a good deck, but it's not unbeatable. Buzzwall has been having a lot of success against it and is arguably lately the better deck. We got plenty of options against Zoroark. The thing is, if we make Zoroark too unfair with stuff like Puzzle of Time, then it can get to beating its counters. Ideally, what we want is a really good deck that has counters. We don't want an amazing deck that can't be beaten. And the issue is that when you bring Zoroark out with Puzzle of Time, you can play too many things to help you get around the decks that would otherwise be countering you. And I don't think Zoroark gets bad when we take away Puzzle of Time. You've still got Skyfield here, which with a full bench means you do 180 for just a double colorless energy. Just earlier today, we looked at Giratina and how ridiculous that looks with Zoroark. It's still going to be a really good deck, 
it's still going to have crazy consistency, but you're now not going to be able to just continually reuse all of those tricks you were before. So is this a good ban? For decks other than Zoroark, or similar, you know, decks that can reuse all of these things, I'm not convinced it is a great ban. Because I think it's a kind of card where you've got to put a lot in to get it out. But unfortunately, I think with Zoroark, this is an issue. Interestingly enough, with Wally, TPCI did come out and just say, yeah, it's Trevenant. Trevenant's the issue. They didn't say that with Zoroark. But as I sit here and look at Puzzle of Time, I see a really good card, which has a lot of potential, but is open for abuse. And I think Zoroark is the main card abusing it. For Zoroark's, yes, it is a good ban, because honestly, it, it's just too good. Sorry about that. But I want to know what you think about this ban. Do you think Puzzle of Time is a good ban? Do you think it's a little bit overly officious? Let me know in the comment section. Go nuts, but remember the rule. Be nice. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wassy, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash PTCG Radio. If you want to support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and all of that, I think you should, but then again, I'm a little bit biased. Head on over to patreon.com slash PTCG Radio, where you can do exactly that. But by far, the most important thing, as always, is to look after yourselves. Until next time, thank you very much for watching. My name is Ross, and you've been watching PTCG Radio.